Hi all, I have yet another amazing example to show you today of the Alakine Defence. So this is a game sent to me by Brian Tillis, who has done a fantastic course at Chessable. Uh, this is the code here if you want to check out that Dark Knight Rises. Fantastic rating. Uh, so nearly 5 out of 5, basically. It covers all the variations of these two games featured today on the channel. Uh, so let's have a look at this one. Tamas Petr Enyi against Vasily Ivanchuk. So this is a tournament played in 2016. Novi Sad tournament. So e4, Ivanchuk provokes with knight f6. We see knight c3. So this is actually quite a popular sideline. Black strikes with d5 though. We have e5, knight fd7. And white is tempted for e6. If white wants to transpose into a French defence, it limits uh, white's options severely. With this knight uh, blocking the c pawn, the white knight might want to go in a Steinitzian variation with knight c e2 to transpose there. But sometimes that's quite nice for black. And in fact, Vasily Ivanchuk himself uh, has played that with black with uh, sometimes great success. So, for example, e6. F4, C5. If this, if this knight has to move, this is, I believe, the Steinitz variation. It's fine for black. Black can get in a quick B5 as well. So um, we see knight F, D7, E6. This is a critical test. Very, very aggressive. Pawn sacrifice. F takes. You can see that this bishop is being hemmed in here. And also, because there's only two pawns now on the king side, white seems to have potential for a hack attack. We see d4, c5, knight f3, knight c6. With this battle over the d4 square, white tries to pin at least one of these knights potentially. g6, so the battle of the d4 square continues with this bishop fianchettoing to put pressure on d4 here. h4, very direct attacking play. Bishop g7, white gives up a light square bishop, hoping perhaps that this bishop is not going to be that active later in this game. We see knight g5, knight f6, and now h5. So carrying on with the hack attack. On d takes c5, black just castles. And here, g takes is actually a very interesting option compared to knight takes h5 because black doesn't have to take on h5 here. Black can actually kick away the pesky knight on g5 and then then maybe a leisure take here first and then kick the queen and it's absolutely fine for black black's getting a big advantage there so uh, knight f6 we see actually um h5 here instead of d takes c5 but again this option of g takes h5 is a very beautiful upside to it because knight takes h5 does run into rook takes h5 which might be unpleasant G takes h5 gives some extra options. It also vacates the g6 square, which is sometimes significant if the queen can sometimes use that square later once the black king moves. That would exert pressure across the center and on g2. So g6 is not a bad square, but the other options with the rook dangling on h5 are also really interesting. We see bishop f4. So on rook takes h5, for example, Black could play c takes d4, knowing that if queen takes, then we just take this for nothing. That actually protects uh, the bishop as well. And here, black center is a total nightmare mass of pawns. So we see bishop f4, trying to keep a lid on black's central mobility. Black castles, bishop e5. So as in the other game example we saw today, White's interested in getting rid of this defensive bishop to try and expose some dark square weaknesses in Black's camp. But now this queen e8, that lovely g6 square, is a really nice, cute upside of g takes h5, as well as leaving you know the rook potentially dangling. But here, yeah, a great square for the queen. Knight f3, c takes d4, chipping away <clears throat> at White's center. We see bishop takes d4. And now a highly liberating move for this c8 bishop. e5 is played by Vasily Ivanchuk. Bishop takes e5. On knight takes e5, this runs into knight g4. This is really pleasant for black. A lot of pressure on e5. 
if knight takes then bishop takes hits the queen f3 and now here with the king in the center e5 is very powerful and black can even afford an exchange sack in this line the central pawn mobility combined with the lovely bishop pair here and the b file pressure means black's really in the driving seat in this variation black's getting a nice advantage there overall it is a complicated position but black's doing really well so okay so bishop takes e5 perhaps knight takes e5 was the lesser evil move so to speak queen g6 hitting g2 and now we have queen e2 and now bishop g4 pinning that knight white castles queen side check putting the king now on b1 knight d7 we see the bishop dropping back and now e5 again so really trying to get rid of these pawns so that the rooks can love that e file can be active on that e file so queen a6 is played on bishop takes e5 going into self pin is usually a bad idea for example here that self pin is going to be pretty destructive for white white's going to be losing material or worse the king is going to get hacked here after knight c4 hitting the queen and the b file use is absolutely devastating this this kind of scenario is absolutely devastating for white so um we have actually queen a6 what is resorting to artificial looking moves away from where the original dreams were but look at these vicious bishops black's king is really quite snug here bishop f5 going on the attack against white's king we see knight h4 if queen e2 here dropping back that, that admits defeat and yeah bishop g4 again with e4 in mind uh this kind of variation is just going to be absolutely fantastic for black so knight h4 letting c2 drop king going to a1 queen f6 uh, we see rook e1 e4 opening up this diagonal against the king on a1 is a very powerful diagonal but imagine if the bishop comes to g7 then all sorts of juicy moves like queen takes c3 become possible we see queen e2 bishop protects itself supported by the pawn allowing h5 to drop now bishop g7 with the clear and imminent threat of queen takes c3 mating the white king queen g4 pinning the bishop uh, so for example just to put that on the board for fun rook h3 queen takes c3 bishop takes c3 is checkmate so we see queen g4 stopping this for the moment knight e5 and this picks up basically the dark square bishop of white after bishop takes e5 if queen h4 then this knight goes to c4 with the devastating threat of well both queen takes c3 here because this bishop's pinned and also potentially knight takes b2 and if queen g4 here then this is just no good if white's best move now is knight f5 because black's going to unpin and play queen takes c3 then that doesn't bode well at all for white so we see bishop takes e5 lesser evil move queen takes e5 rook h3 rook f4 queen g3 and now doubling the rook supporting them knight g6 very desperate from white this doesn't really work at all but uh yeah black's really just going to unpin for example with king f7 potentially and then have the nasty you know maybe maybe the king goes to e7 in preparation or e8 sometimes but basically once that happens once queen takes c3 is reignited not king h8 knight g6 check but once the king gets out of the way then this these two diagonals are really going to be a killer for white's king so this is absolutely desperate knight g6 that's just taken queen f6 check one last check or two and after queen g6 now white resigned so this shows actually that the variation with e6 is actually being encouraged at high levels black really wants this aggressive pawn sacrifice there are fantastic counterplay opportunities afforded by counter sacrificing the pawns liberating this bishop sometimes using the g6 square on g takes h5 beautiful little upsides which you might not be aware of i'm i'm certainly more aware with this game example now of some of those upsides are really provoking this hack attack from white so a lot of the variations of this game have been covered in this book 
uh, which this video celebrates at Chessable. If you want to check that out, there's this short URL code here, Alakine Defense, the Dark Knight Rises. So this was another wonderful example sent by Brian Tillis to me. So I thought I'd share that with you today. Okay. Hope you enjoyed that. Thanks very much.